Are you interested in making your apps smarter? Understanding your user's location is one of the key ingredients that can help unlock a simpler and more intuitive user experience. I'm James McGill, and I'm going to show you how you can use the Google Places API for Android to intelligently adapt your app's behavior based on the user's current location. For some time, developers have been able to use the location services on Android to better understand where their users are. However, our users and these APIs have been talking in two different languages. Location APIs communicate using latitude and longitude. But when you and I talk about where to meet, we use the name of a particular cafe or restaurant, not long numbers. The Google Places API for Android provides the missing key needed to translate between these two languages and powered by Google's database of over 100 million places so that you can turn this into this. Let's imagine that we're building an application to improve our users' well-being by providing fitness tips no matter where they are. When a user opens the app, we want to show the information that is most useful to them at that time and at that particular place. We could ask them where they are, but who needs another tap getting in the way of using our app? Using the Google Places API get current place method, we can skip that prompt and automatically determine which place the user is at. Get current place returns a list of places based on the device's current location and ordered by likelihood. While similar functionality has been available via the Web Places API for some time, we have significantly improved both accuracy and precision in bringing the API to Android. We've achieved this by deeply integrating the API with the wide variety of sensors available on a modern mobile device, including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. By combining the list of likely places with context from the app, we can improve these estimates even further. In our case, we can use the place type associated with each entry to filter down to only fitness venues like parks and gyms. Along with each place, the get current place method also returns a likelihood. That's a value between 0 and 1, representing how likely it is that the device is at a particular place. We can use this value as a threshold in our app to ensure that we only infer the location when it really makes sense. For our fitness app, a likelihood of more than 0.7 for a place that is identified as being either a gym or a park is a very strong signal, which we can use to avoid having to ask the user where they are. Awesome! The Google APIs team is invested in improving the accuracy of these place detection APIs. So over time, you should expect to see the likelihood of the first place returned increase. If you want to help us get there faster, you can by calling the report device at place method in cases where you have a strong signal that the user is at a particular location. Once submitted, this data is used anonymously to improve our model of the world, but cannot be retrieved by your application or end users. So if it's important to have access to this data, you should also store it in a persistent data store. The best part is that this functionality is available for free, up to a default limit of 150,000 queries per day for verified developers. Need more? No worries. Get in touch with us at this URL or check out this site for instructions on how to verify your developer project. With the Google Places API, you can bring the intelligence of semantic location to your app. To get started, check out the Getting Started Guide at this URL. I'm James McGill, and I can't wait to see you going places with the Google Places API for Android.